Well, good afternoon. How are you doing? It's Pastor Jay here at Christ Church. We're glad you're joining us today for our time of devotion, or if you're watching it at another time, we're glad you're uh, again joining with us for this time of sharing and reflection. Uh, this is the noon here in Charleston where they test the fire alarm system or the warning system outside so the the sirens are blaring out there. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear them, uh, but I can hear them today. But as I begin today, I, I wanted to share a song. It's been kind of on my mind. I, I, uh, I was getting ready today to figure out what I would do with us and, and thinking about things. And, and this one song came to mind. It's an old Don Henley tune. Uh, from the, You may remember Don Henley from the Eagles. He put out some uh, solo albums, and this actually came from one of his solo albums. But it's one of the songs I felt like really has some very uh, uh, good... Uh, spiritual overtones. I often try to bring songs into our time together that may be from the secular world, but speak to us in some manner uh, of a spiritual nature. And this is one I believe does. It's called Learn to Be Still. Just another day in paradise As you stumble to your bed You give anything to silence There's voices ringing in your head You thought you could find happiness Just over that green hill Thought you would be satisfied, but you never will learn to be still. We're like sheep without a shepherd, we don't know how to be alone. So we wander around this desert and wind up following the wrong God's home. But the flock cries out for another. They keep answering that bell. And one more starry eyed Messiah meets a violent farewell. Learn to be still. Learn to be still Now the flowers in your garden They don't smell so sweet, so sweet Maybe you've forgotten The heaven lying at your feet There's so many contradictions in all these messages we send. We're asking, how do I get out of here? And where do I fit in? And the world is torn and shaken, even if your heart is breaking. Waiting for you to awaken And someday you will Learn to be still Learn to be still Just keep on running Keep on running Learn to be still Need to learn to be still. Learn to be still. Let us pray. Lord God, as we pause here in the midst of our day, we we seek to be still, to stop our running and chasing after so many things, and to be still 
in your presence, listening to you and for your word for us today. As we do, we lift up to you those in need. We know some of our friends have had surgeries and we pray for their healing. Others continue to wrestle with this COVID virus that continues to plague us and we pray for their healing as well. We pray for any who've lost loved ones and pray for your grace to be with them. And in all these things, we seek to learn to be still, to listen to your word for us, and to follow wherever you lead. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to put my guitar down here. The lesson I selected for today is one that comes to us from the Old Testament. It's actually from Deuteronomy. Uh, it's chapter 20, uh, verses, uh, or chapter 30, excuse me, uh, verses 15 uh, to 20. Here are these words written in the Old Scriptures. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. These are words of God for people gathered today in the presence of God. You know, I don't know about you, but it's getting any more. I don't like to go to the store. Now, again, I often go to the grocery store for my family or I go, go shopping to get things. But the reason I don't like to go to the store is not because of COVID or not because of the crowds. I mean, I feel pretty safe if I, I mask up and go on in to get what I need. But what frustrates me when I go to the store anymore are the choices choices. There are so many choices. I don't know what to choose. I mean, I go in and I just want to get some Triscuits. I like those Triscuit crackers. Well, I go in and I want to just get a box of Triscuits and there are 6,000, it seems like, different versions of Triscuits. And all I want is the basic Triscuit. I don't care if it has basil and sun-dried tomato on it or if it's cheddar. I just want, I just want a cracker, okay? But so yeah, there's so many choices. It's hard. And I was thinking about that today because our scripture, of course, is talking about a time when Moses presented the people and God presented the people with a chance to choose. They had to choose a way in which they were going to go. It's like the 19th century English poet Willen Dunkerley uh, wrote. He wrote it under the pseudonym John Oxenham, and he penned a poem that's called The Way. And he says, To every man there openeth a way, a way and ways and a way. And the high soul climbs the highway, and the low soul gropes the low. And in between, on the misty flats, the rest drift to and fro. But to every man there openeth a highway and a low, and every man decideth the way his soul shall go. And that is the way it was in the scripture today. They were choosing a way that they would go. Moses presents it to them, and God presents it to them in a sense of choosing the way of blessing or, or a way of death and curses. And there's no, no doubt the way that uh, Moses and God wanted the people to choose. He wanted them to choose life so that their descendants might live and love the Lord their God, obeying him and holding fast to him, it says. For that means life to you and length of days, right? One of the things I think is important to note here is that uh, the Hebrew word for blessing, barakah, denotes the power of life to expand and to flourish. It's what we're all looking for, that good way, the... The notion or the idea that in all cultures it's not it's not just a free floating thing, but our, our life is full of blessing and we encounter that shalom, the, the power and life that God has for us. Whereas conversely, the Hebrew word for curse, a kalela, 
uh, is complete deprivation of blessing. It's the exact opposite. It's existence without that expansion and frust- you know, growing. It's very frustrating and, and difficult. So here there's kind of this clear-cut choice. You can choose this way of blessing. You can choose this way of curse. Which are you going to choose? And, of course, the, the people speak out. They want to choose the way of blessing. And what I've always been wondered then, but what, what does that entail? What, what is the way of blessing? How do, we, how do we do that? How do we live that out? We've been spending a lot of time at our church lately on talking about finding our why. And so, you know, how do we, how do we live into this way of blessing? And I think there's two keys that, that Moses, or in this writing of Moses, that we encounter. And there are two things. One of those words is obey, and the other word is love. And he links both of these, obeying and loving, as the way to blessing. For he says, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I'm commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God and walking in his ways and observing his commandments, you know, God will bless you. So you see, this living and making this choice to to live this way of blessing versus curse is a way of obeying and loving. Now I know obedience sometimes isn't a, a popular word, you know. We talk about taking dogs to obedience school, where we kind of whip them into shape, right? So obedience has this this connotation of almost a punishment or, or a negative thing. Uh, but you got to remember, of course, Moses was talking about obedience, meaning adhering to God's covenant. And God's covenant was something that was about a relationship. It was a covenant that was built on God being faithful to his promises to the people and the people living into those promises. So so it's it's a relational word, not a not a negative, arbitrary, uh, forceful word in a sense to me. And also the thing to remember that the word obeyance obedience uh, roots is in the word adir, which means listening. You know, that sense of listening. So so I think that the obeying that Moses is talking about here if we will obey the, you know, the law, so to speak, or obey the, the covenant, is living in relationship with God and living in relationship by God by listening to what God wants to show us. And, of course, the way we do that is by reading the Word, reading the Scriptures, such as I, I read a moment ago, and you know, understanding what God's way is for us in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament, looking to Jesus, of course, as the way, the truth, and the life. And we also do it by prayer and, you know, listening to God. Uh, you know, I think in many ways, reading scriptures that way too. You know, the scriptures aren't just a, a rule book. They're, they're a way that opens our hearts to, to God. And so, so reading the scriptures devotionally, not just as some type of a rule book or a guidebook, is another way in which we, we live into that and, and are listening and obeying God by seeking to uh, be in relationship with him. And of course, praying uh, is also sometimes hard. We have struggles in our life, and we, we pray for things to happen, and we pray for you know, people facing illnesses. I just prayed because we know some folks are in the hospital here at our church, and we want healing to them. But prayer is also a way of, of listening to God by simply praying and, and being in God's presence. And that's one way we, of course, build the covenant. Uh, and I think that's part of the abundant living and hope and the way of life that Moses uh, says that we are being called to do to, and to choose. And it's choosing to, to listen to God. And, of course, we sometimes wonder what God's voice sounds like if we listen. And I'll have to be honest. I've never heard God sit down and say, hey, Jay, this is God. Here's what you need to do. It's always a little different than that. It's more of a, you know, a prompting on my heart. But Douglas uh, Brewer uh, writes in his blog, he, he puts it this way. He says, The voice sounds pretty much the same whether you're in Tuscany or Provence or my little village of Milan, which is 12 minutes by train from Zurich. I get up early while it's still dark outside and I sit in my living room, always the same place, and I listen, knowing that I could be anywhere in the world at that particular moment. It doesn't matter because the voice I'm listening for speaks to me of truths deeper than charming village life or mountain views. The voice I'm listening for speaks to me of truths worth knowing, truths that are worthy of me. For the voice I'm listening for tells me that I am loved with a love which is beyond description. For you see, when we listen for the voice of God, it's a voice that always speaks 
of love. Because you remember, that's the other key word I mentioned a moment ago, love. Moses says that choosing life and blessings means that his people will love God, walk in God's ways, and observe God's commandments. And this love is a, is a two-way street. Eugene Peterson, who I often read his translation of the scriptures, the message, he writes, he says, God is not a random thought. God is not a word to fill in the gaps of what we don't know. God is actively, energetically dealing with people in love. Love is the key and characteristic word in the book, meaning the Bible. This love is both God's character and God's command. That's an interesting way of phrasing it. If you see, love is both God's character and God's command. And because we are under this kind of a God, there's no living worth the name that's not a participation in that love. So I sense that, you know, Moses, in using the word love in De Deuteronomy, he's talking about it, it's, a, it's always an action. It's never simply a feeling. God's love is who God is and also the way God's being exists around us. God's love in action delivered the Hebrews from their bondage in Egypt. Uh, and so, too, are we called to love. I'm often reminded of a, a story I, I encountered in a lot of different resources, and so I probably undoubtedly shared it with you before, but I, I wanted to share it again because it, it speaks, I think, to as we wrestle with how do we choose the way of life and love in this swirling and confusing and, and often bitter world in which we live because Lord knows today sometimes it seems like a bitter and a harsh world out there. It seems that late one evening, a rabbi was sitting out with his students, and he was watching the stars appear in the heavens. They were appearing one by one, and they were watching the stars come into view. And so one of the students said, tell me this. You know, uh, how can we know when the night has ended and the day has begun? Well, one person jumped right in and says, I know the night's over and the day's begun. When I look across the pasture, and I can tell the animal is a dog, and it's not a sheep. And then I know that the day has come. Of course, the teacher didn't say anything. And so a young man asked, well, you know, is that the right answer? And then the speak, teacher did speak up. He said, well, it's a good answer, but it's, I'm not sure it's the right answer. And let me, another student said. He said, well, you know, the night's over and the day has begun when the light falls on the leaves and you can tell a palm tree or a fig tree without really looking. And you can tell which one that it is from a distance. Teacher said, yeah, that's a good answer too, but I'm not sure that's the final answer or the right answer. And so the students were confused. They said, well, you know, well, well Rabbi, you know, what is the question? What, what is the answer to this question? How do we know when it's uh, night is over and morning has come? And the rabbi said, it's when you look in the eyes of a human being and you see a brother or sister, then you know it's morning. If you cannot see a sister or brother, then you know it's always night. Those rabbis always get me. Because they're reminding us that in this seeking to choose life and choosing blessing begins with obeying and listening. And then it begins and ends with living in love. And that if we want to move our way through the, the division and the difficulties in our, perhaps in our families, but clearly in our culture, I've got to realize and look into whose ever eyes I'm looking into, that that person is my sister or brother. And when I do that, I'll know that morning's come and that light has come. And in many ways, I think then, too, we would recognize, using Jesus' language, that the kingdom's come. This kingdom, which we, we pray for. And to understand what's happening in our world, we need to listen, and we need to love. And it is this listening and loving is the manner in which we seek the kingdom that Christ calls us to. So I invite you to think on that today. Choose blessing. Choose to listen. Choose to love. Thanks be to God. 
Amen. For my closing song, I wanted to do uh, one that uh, is probably familiar to you. It's called Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. We shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. Alleluia, alleluia. Well, bless you, my friends, and may the peace and grace of God be with you. May you hear his voice, may you feel his love, and may you always share it with others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.